and the peace of the Lord be with you and welcome to this Monday's thought for the day and there's goes Patch hello Patch Patch is joining us as he always does I'm going to start off um, today with a piece of poetry by Elizabeth Barrett Browning um, and then ask some what-if questions now by now by now most of you probably know me well enough that when I start asking what if questions, I want us to hear the text maybe in different ways, to risk thinking new and different ideas, and to push against the usual interpretations, you know, maybe stretch ourselves, and there's nothing wrong with stretching yourselves first thing on a Monday morning. So in her poem, Aura Lee, Browning writes, Earth crammed with heaven, and every common bush a fire with God. Let me read that to you again. Earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush a fire with God. So here's what I'm wondering for today. What if the burning bush were regular occurrences? Maybe the burning bush is not or was not unique to Moses. The rabbis of old say that others passed by the bush while it was burning but only Moses turned aside. What if the miracle of the burning bush isn't that it wasn't consumed by the fire, but the miracle itself was that Moses turned aside? Maybe turning aside is a thing, is the real miracle of the story. What if the burning bush is part of everyday life? And maybe the only question is whether we turn aside. What if every burning bush is a call asking for and awaiting for a response from us? Maybe the caller of this call, God, not only wants but needs a response from Moses, from you and from me. You probably know where I'm heading with this. What if the burning bush is something that each of experienced in our own lives throughout our lives. The question is not whether there is a burning bush in our life, but whether we will turn aside and respond to that call being made upon us. The burning bush and other circumstances or events that interrupt our life and grab our attention. They are not part of our plans. They take us by surprise. They stop us in our tracks and cause us to turn aside. We have to take a second look. Sometimes we were brought up short, speechless, lost for words, but the burning bush comes to us as an overflow and an excess. Sometimes it's a positive and welcoming way, and sometimes it's not. Regardless of how it comes to us, the burning bush shatters the horizon of our expectations. This is what I mean by this. We all live within the horizon of our expectation. It's part of life. It's part of life that we are reasonably planned out and can reasonably count upon. It holds a future that is mostly foreseeable. We almost know what tomorrow will bring. Our exceptions, expectations will likely be to be met. But we don't know what lies beyond or is coming towards our horizon. Within our horizon, Life is relatively stable, which means it is also relatively unstable. There is a risk and a potential for instability, for something to shatter the horizon of our expectations, something that we could not see coming. Moses never thought it was possible for a bush to be on fire, but not to be burnt up. He never expected or planned on being the one bring God's people out of Egypt. Those were beyond his horizons or expectations. And in our lives, in each of our lives, there are experiences that shatter our horizon of expectations. They are the events or the conversations and words, the happenings that were unplanned, unexpected, unforeseeable. And they always ask something of us in response they are those times that leave us weeping and asking why 
they are the experiences when the excess is just too great we have no words to use only tears of joy there are those times when we cannot wait to share that with someone what has happened or say not in my wildest dreams could I have imagined or guessed that this would be in my life there are the times when we shake our head in disbelief and say no that's not possible it cannot be and other times we throw up our hands and say God only knows when and how has any of this happened in your life what have been your burning bushes for you let me give an example for mine I was in a good paid job in a university teaching and um, looking at employment within universities it was a good paid job I was a nice house comfortable a nice home Pentecostal minister for as well for 30 years and everything was perfect we went on holiday to London just for the weekend I never knew that I would experience a burning bush moment in my life a thing that would shatter my horizon my expectations of how I thought the life was going to be the norm and I sat in St Paul's Cathedral and I heard a voice inside me or we could say today's story goes I saw a burning bush and I turned aside and it was this is where I want you to be now the first time I heard that I chuckled to myself and was like no way Lord no way I'm Pentecostal I have been for the last 30 years then again it came this is where I want you to be that was my burning bush moment and I remember leaving St Paul's Cathedral meeting Debbie and the kids outside I said Debbie I think God's calling us to the Church of England and she went yeah right and then she saw the look upon my face she went oh you're serious the rest is history I had my burning bush experience that does not mean however that God causes those things to happen it means that God calls in every place and every situation God calls with the promise of life more life and new life and each calling awaits a response the burning bush doesn't reveal God to be a supreme being or a superhero or a big guy in the sky. It said it reveals a God to be more like a call, an asking, an instance. The burning bush experience, God calls more than God does. Let me try and rephrase that. The burning bush experience, God calls more than God does. Or accomplishes let me let me expand that further the doing and the accomplishing offer us to do God gives us the call we have to make that move think about the story of Moses uh, in Exodus it says I have observed the misery of my people I have heard their cry I know their suffering and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians now it looks like we get somewhere. God is coming to rescue God's people. God's listened to what the people wanted. But listen to what God says next to Moses. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. I have come down to deliver them, God says. So you, come, I will send you God says to Moses to do it. We are his hands and his feet. God is going to deliver God's people by sending Moses. Moses is to give existence to God's call for deliverance. Moses is to make real God's desire for the people. What if that's how God is working in our lives too? Remember I told you that the rabbis say that others passed by the burning bush but did not turn aside. What if they too were to have been given the existence to God's call, God's insistence that the Israelites be freed from Egypt? I wonder how you or I have not turned aside. When have we failed to refuse to respond to the call of God on our lives? The burning bush story is one of a call and response 
something is being called for in the name of God. And I can't help but believe that that call and response is always the story of our lives. Something is being asked of us in the name of God. The burning bush experience does not happen apart from or in spite of everyday life, but in the midst of life, in the keeping of the flocks. Because that's what Moses was doing when it happened. He was keeping the flock of his father-in-law. He was doing the ordinary routine things of his life. The same things he did day after day after day, the week before, the month before, the year before. But burning bushes show us, they show us that God is, is wanting to take us out of the ordinary life. Burning bushes show us, show up as we keep our flocks in, in our normal routine of our everyday life in our marriages, in our parenting, in our work, our friendships, our errands, our calling up people and asking how they're doing, our reading, the news, our household tasks. Whatever the ordinary routine is, God can call us in those times. In what ways is the horizon of your expectation being shattered today? What is interrupting or disrupting or erupting in your life and asking for a response what is being called of you today and the more important question is how will you respond there are people who hear this message who may have never come to church what is your response going to be there'll be people hearing this message who think oh i'm set in my ways now no Maybe God's calling you to do something. Maybe he's calling you to be a reader. Maybe he's calling you to be a pastoral worker. Maybe he's calling you to be a server or a sacristist within the church. What is God calling you to be? And more importantly, how are you going to respond to that? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you call the misfits. You call those who think they're unworthy. Moses, who said he had a speech impediment and wanted to bring Joshua along. Lord, help our disbelief. Help us to believe that you can turn us into something great for your kingdom's sake. Help us from our past, the past that told us we were failures, the past that tells us we were useless, the past or even the present that tells us we can't do anything for God. Let us ignore that and see that burning bush, your call upon our lives, and let us respond to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That's my prayer this week, that you would hear God's call, whatever shape or form it will take. I, sitting here now, five years ago, would not have thought I was being here, going to be here. God has a plan for each one of us. You might want to join in with doing the recordings, or helping with the recordings, or thoughts for the days. Speak to Michael, and uh, let him know that you're interested. You might want to get involved with the Bible study or the Songs of Praise. Join in with us. Songs of Praise is every Tuesday night. Bible study is Wednesday night. Start off with small things. Join with us and Zoom for prayer, daily prayer at 9.30 every morning. And coffee morning at 11. We've got things going on all, all week. We're trying to keep the church as live and as active as we can, even in these weird circumstances. But come and join us. Look at your notice sheets to see what's available, see what services are going on. Also, please remember those on your prayer list, on the, on the notice sheets. Bring them before God every day. There are people who need healing. Healing in the physical sense, healing in the spiritual sense, but healing because they're hurting for different re reasons as well. Let us say the grace together. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, 
be with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hopefully I'll see you on the Zoom prayer meeting tomorrow morning. Failing that, I'll see you next week on the thought of the day. God bless you.